Good morning, sir. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? How was your weekend? It was good, man. Starting to see some uh, baseball weather yeah. out this way in Alberta. It's yeah, nice. it was like 17 above yesterday. Yeah. It was crazy here in Calgary. It's crazy. It's pothole season, too. Right, isn't it? Oh, boy. Yeah. Is it ever? I, yeah. I, I was, uh, I'll tell you this quick story before we get into ball. I was uh, heading to Bed Bath & Beyond with my wife on Saturday, and... She was driving, not that that's important detail, but <laughs> might be important to some people. I don't know. And uh, anyways, hit a pothole. Uh, mm-hmm. Two flat tires instantly. Two flat tires. Yeah. So hit them with both, you know, because one's right behind the other. And uh, so we pulled into this Walmart parking lot, um, called AAA or whatever to come get a tow. And uh, tow truck's going to be about an hour. So we head into Walmart, whatever, kill, kill some time. So we're waiting in the car. Tow truck calls, it's about 15 minutes out, and it just, the thought pops in my head, like, if a little baby tow truck comes, uh, I don't know how they're gonna tow us to the dealership or whatever, if both flat tires are on the same side, right? Right. So, so my wife's on the phone, and she says, oh, my husband says, you know, I hope you're bringing, like, a flatbed uh, tow truck, and tow truck driver's like, no, 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 it'll be fine, like whatever so the tow truck driver gets there and he's like no we'll just we'll uh you know swap one of the tires put a spare tire on so it'll be fine so we spent about 20 minutes this guy's just really struggling trying to get the spare tire on and i'm i'm just trying like, to be hands off right trying to be hands off i mean i've worked in trades i hate it when the homeowners there watch you know oh can i hold the flashlight yeah. while you service this it's just like just let me struggle. It'll it'll get done. I won't break anything. So I get it, right? So I'm trying to like not crowd this guy while he's working on it. But he's having just a bear of a time trying to get the one tire off to So I hear him whacking our tire with this wooden block and I come around, I'm like, Is it did you lift it up high enough? And he's like, Oh yeah, it's it's fine. And then he goes to like put his hand under the tire. He's like, Oh, maybe I could lift it a little bit more. So that's why he couldn't get it off. It's, right, it's comes right off as soon it. as he gets it higher. Of yeah. Course, right? <laughs> so I'm like, oh man, this guy knows what he's doing. I'm in good hands here. And, right. Uh, anyway, so the spare tire gets get, gets put on, and uh, next thing you know, he's you know got the tow truck under the one end and he's lifting it up, and then he pulls out this weird thing that I've never seen before, but I guess it's pretty common. It's like a little mini axle with like four tires like two on each side and he propped that under the other end of the car so all four wheels of my car were off the ground anyways because he had this weird I'll, I'll put a picture of it in discord but i was like so he didn't even need to change that back tire exactly i'm like why did we oh just spend God, the last dude. half hour so <laughs> anyways we got to the dealership and it was fine um i mean we, we kind of just kicked the problem down the road a bit but uh, we put the summer tires on. Right. Just took the winters off, you know, with the nice weather we're having. So I'm sure I've jinxed it, and we're going to get Oh, a nice you're big really dump of tempting snow. the weather gods here. Way to go, so bud. Anybody that sees a big dump of snow, you can blame me. I haven't even heard of two flat tires back to back like that. That's well, not very good luck. I mean, when you hit a pothole going highway speed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, you're going to pop them up. <laughs> You did the science on it. It's going to yeah. happen. So anyways, that was that was my weekend. That was fun. Well, there you go. Um, welcome to the walk-off, everybody. Yes. Thanks for, thanks for, thanks for joining us here. Time. <laughs> uh, we're excited today. I, I know we spent uh, some time yesterday, uh, last episode, I should say, kind of uh, shining a light on the women of baseball. And we are in the middle of... Uh, Women's History Month, so we figured that it was appropriate to have a female guest today, Stephanie Ellis, the general manager, or assistant general manager, I should say, with the Vancouver Canadians, the high A affiliate of the Toronto Blue Jays, was going to join us. We had a wonderful talk with her. Amazing. It was awesome. She had all sorts of great things to tell us about uh, the Canadians, her rise up the front office there, her hopes and dreams of maybe even being involved in a major league baseball front office and her time in NCAA. All of that is not available right now. Um, <laughs> That's my bad. 
<laughs> so we had some technical difficulties. Basically, yeah. I forgot to end the recording, and then my computer ran out of memory, you know, 15 gigabytes later, mm-hmm. and the file's corrupt. So. so, by the way, if there are any computer nerds out there who just heard that problem and have for some reason forgotten themselves to stop recording and have a massive file that's now corrupted and won't open and you know the solution to this, please, please reach out. That would be incredible if somebody could help us uh, recover this interview. If not, yeah. Stephanie will come back on. She was a lovely, lovely lady with some really fun baseball stuff to say. So we you may re- just need to kick that down the road. You realize you've just opened the door for a flood of comments that just say, have you tried restarting it? Yeah, yeah. Jiggle the cable, guys. Jiggle the cable. (laughs) Kick it. So instead, we are going to continue with our spring training extravaganza, highlighting Blue Jays prospects. We've got Nick Algeyer's interview running in probably 25 to 30 minutes here. Missouri boy. Super exciting stuff. Big lefty. Looks like he's probably going to start the year in double A. We'll see. Uh, Missouri boy. So he's a huge hockey fan. Surprise We actually... Surprised me, too. We actually had quite a good hockey talk with them. Die-hard St. Louis Blues fan. So we kind of hear about how happy he was in 2019 with that cup win, mm-hmm. where he was, what he was doing watching it. He was actually watching it on the bus. So we'll, we'll throw to that shortly here. We've also got a couple more Blue Jays prospects coming up this weekend, or I should say this week. Tomorrow we talk to Semro Burst. He's from the Netherlands, and the Jays actually took him last year in the international draft. Really excited to talk to this kid. He's a 19-year-old pitcher. The Jays are really high on him. We're not sure where he's going to start. Mm-hmm. Probably low-A Dunedin this year. Mm-hmm. But we'll we'll ask him what he figures their plan is for him. We'll get into – I'm just excited, in all honesty, to talk to him about what it was like coming up in a non-traditional baseball atmosphere, you know? Like the Netherlands deals with a lot of the same problems Canadians do Mm – when it comes to baseball, you know, shorter season, mm-hmm. you got to deal with winter. You don't have as much field time. Mm-hmm. So we'll talk to him about that and and what it's going to be like for him to, you know, be a fish out of water coming over here to North America. So that's kind of cool. And then we also talk tomorrow to Chris Beck. He is a catcher in the minor league system and who was actually called up to big league camp just a few weeks ago. So we'll talk to him about what it was like going in kind of halfway through, you know, Mm -hmm. everyone's kind of already got the rhythm down of spring training and then he shows up, but excited to talk to him. And then Josh Palacio, uh, probably Friday, we're going to talk to him. Yeah. So that's very cool. All right, let's get into it, buddy. Spring training. We're two weeks away from opening day. I'm getting pretty excited, man. And we're actually at the point now where we're going to start being able to see some Blue Jays spring training games on the television. Right. I know I've complained about this literally every single episode, so I won't dwell on it too much, although it is ridiculous that Rogers doesn't air their own product, but we don't need to harp on it. Today uh, at 11, we get to watch the Tigers and the Jays, so that's kind of exciting. Yeah. Um, Ryu pitching? Ryu is pitching. So Probably probably see him go four innings this time. They're starting to get to the point where they're stretched out to four or five innings, so. Hey friends, Uh, thanks so much for watching this far into our boring new show today. Uh, We recently hit 300 subscribers on YouTube, which is amazing. Thank you all so much. Um, Some of you have asked us to start a Patreon, um, and we will, uh, but we aren't going to be locking any of this content uh, that you've come to enjoy behind a paywall, so don't worry about that. Uh, The new show, all the interviews in their entirety, uh, past interviews, every interview that we do into the future all 100% for free to everybody uh, on YouTube. So don't worry about that. Um, What we will be doing though, is soon we're gonna be uh, live streaming our new interviews um, and our Patreons, uh, when we get that up and running, uh, we'll be able to watch live and suggest questions in the live chat, which is gonna be really cool. Um, We're also gonna be running some contests for stuff like uh, autographed baseballs from some of the guests we've had on the show, stuff like that. Um, an entry to those draws will um, be like a free throw-in for our Patreons as well. We have a few other exciting things that we aren't quite ready to announce yet, uh, but we will be managing all of our Patreon stuff through our Discord. And as a thank you to all of those uh, who have been an early supporter of the show, which 
I mean, if you've watched this far into a boring news show, uh, clearly you're the person I'm talking to. Uh, but we want to give you a free lifetime access to all of those premium features. Um, and that's why we just kind of are hiding this advertisement, this clip, in the middle of a news episode. So if you're actually seeing this ad, uh, you're the exact kind of viewer that we want to thank and reward with this awesome free perk. Uh, so hidden down below um, in the show notes, there will be a clickable link, uh, whether you're on YouTube or listening along in the podcast. Um, there will be a link, uh, which is you just click on it, and it's an invite to our Discord. Um, Discord's free, but you have to have that invite link. So uh, please click on that, join our Discord. Uh, we'd like to get a nice little community going there. Um, where Scott and I can chat with you guys. Uh, we share news articles, even just stupid memes, whatever. Um, we listen to your feedback. If you guys have suggestions for, you know, the kind of content you want to see on the YouTube channel, um, Discord would be the place to let us know. Um, we also uh, take submissions for Q&A for upcoming guests there. Um, we'll be announcing any exciting guests that we have coming up in our Discord uh, ahead of time um, and that discord is where we're going to be running all of our contests for like the autograph baseballs um, sharing the secret links for our upcoming live streams um, of the interviews so you'll be able to see in discord an invite to the live stream when it's happening and then you'll be able to watch on youtube live in real time submit your questions in the chat everything like that no guarantee we're going to get to all your questions, um, but it's going to be a lot of fun that way. So please, thank you for not skipping through this ad. Um, go ahead and click that link because after opening day, April 1st, um, any new invitations to join our Discord uh, will become a premium perk for our Patreon. So click the link, join now for free, enjoy lifetime access for free, and that's just a special thank you from us for being an early supporter of the show. Thanks again so much. Let's get back to the show. I know we've, it's funny because I, we both feel the same way about spring training for the most part, that the numbers don't matter that much. A lot of the positions that are already locked in, it's just about getting the guys in game playing shape. Staying healthy. However, yeah. this, this year there are a few positions where guys are, are fighting it out, right? We, we're going to see the starting rotation develop as, as it gets closer to opening day. Mm -hmm. There are a few spots there that are question marks, but the big one is the backup catcher position. And it's funny because when the uh, spring training started, I really think that that position was Reese McGuire's to lose. Mm -hmm. I think that in the Jays' management, in their minds, they were like, Alondro Kirk, yes, he lit the fall on fire last mm -hmm. year. He was incredible with his bat, kept up with big league pitching. However, had a little bit more seasoning to go on the defensive end of the ball, mm -hmm. on running a pitching staff, mm -hmm. on all the stuff that goes along with being a professional catcher. Right. Now that we're two weeks out, I can't see Kirk not getting that position. I don't know what they're going to do with Reese McGuire because he is out of options, so they can't send him down without DFA in him, which means that he'll be available on the waiver wire to anyone who would like to pick him up, and someone will. Mm -hmm. that, so, so that's the truth. Someone will pick Reese McGuire up if this is the route the Jays decide to go. Mm -hmm. But man, Kirk is hitting 500 mm -hmm. right now. Every time they put him in, he, he smokes it. And I know it's spring training. But, buddy, I don't understand how you can do anything but just give him the job at this point. I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, yes like, developmentally. No, I mean, like, developmentally, what, what do you think's best? Like, I kind of feel like maybe you let him run with it. Yes and no. I don't think if you send him down to AAA for a month to start the season, I don't think it's going to hurt him. Mm -hmm. It's not going to do any damage to Kirk, right? Now, he already played last year, so like the whole service time, don't call him up till yeah, whatever date. The that's, service time that's is irrelevant. Window, right? Yeah. Um, I just think with Reese McGuire, like you said, he's out of options, so we're not going to carry three catchers. No. If we send him down, he's going to get claimed. 
I just think in terms of asset management, we're going to put Kirk on AAA, and we're going to try and get whatever we can in trade for Reese McGuire. And I don't think, think we'll get much. Try and move them. Why, yeah, why they won't. Yeah. They won't. Yeah, why What's wouldn't? What's the downside yeah. to just putting Kirk in AAA for a month and just putting it yeah. out there? Hey, we got a young, good, you know, relatively left-handed back catcher. Yeah. Yep. Like there is stuff to be attracted to about Reese McGuire. I'm, it's why he's still on the team. Yeah, he's not particularly my type, but there's people his, that are into his that. rope. His rope is definitely shorter at this point. Yep. And I mean, we are talking about the backup catching role. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do think that later on in the season, we're going to see a lot of Kirk, especially if Danny Jansen's back sure. continues to be a problem. For sure. Um, but I'm with you. I don't think there's necessarily a need to rush this kid. Mm-hmm. He's sort of forcing the Jays' hand. Mm-hmm. I can't see them not giving him the position if he continues to rake like this at the plate. Of course. Like if he's literally in spring training hitting four or 500, it's – you almost wish to reward the kid at that point, right? Mm-hmm. For being that prepared coming into spring training. He lost 20 pounds. He looks great. He's put in a ton of effort on the defensive end of side, uh, defensive end of things. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting because that really is one of the only positions that is a question mark at this point mm-hmm. on this team. I mean, you look at every rotation. Other than the back end of the rotation and some bullpen spots. Right. Yeah. The closer. What do you think? Is Yates the guy? Or... I think I think Yates is the guy. Here's the thing. It's funny. I was watching Charlie Montoya, uh, a press conference. It must have been a day ago, two days ago, when he was talking about Jordan Romano, the Markham Madman, right? Mm-hmm. Canadian boy. And his confidence in Romano is actually incredibly impressive mm-hmm. at this point. Like, Charlie said he's got 10 out of 10 confidence in this kid late in the game. Mm-hmm. They were using him to close games last year. I think he's going to get lots of save opportunities. I think it's going to be a bullpen by committee, and it's going to be situation by situation. I don't think there's going to be as many defined roles as Mm -hmm. maybe there were a few years ago. Right. But, yeah, I I think Yates is going to be the guy Mm -hmm. until – Rem- I, it, it's going to be the hot hand too. I think, you know, like if, if Yates struggles for a bit, like again, everyone needs to remember Kirby Yates is a superstar. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. He was one of the best closers in baseball in 2019. He's coming off an injury plagued season. Mm-hmm. He's coming, you know, like that's the thing is he may not be in prime mm-hmm. condition until June. It, and if and if he's and if that's the case, it's not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. It, in fact, it's going to provide opportunities for guys like Jordan Romano and Dolis, yeah. Rafael Dolis. You know what? There's there's no problem with having too many guys in the bullpen that you can count on. It's there, I mean there there are high leverage situations that come up that aren't the bottom of the ninth all the time. A hundred percent, right? A hundred percent. And this is where I think you know. A guy, and I, I think we're going to see it quite often with this starting rotation. I don't think there's a lot of guys in this rotation that are going to go much more than five or six innings. Mm-hmm. So we're going to see a lot of high leverage situations come up mm-hmm. in the six mm-hmm. where maybe it's going to be wonderful mm-hmm. to see a guy like Rafael Dolis, who mm-hmm. could literally be closing mm-hmm. for this team and did it last year, mm-hmm. come in in the sixth and, and be a shutdown guy. A Jordan Romano come in in the yeah. seventh, you know? Yeah. I, I think you're nailing it with, with just there are, you can never have enough high leverage guys in your bullpen. Yeah, absolutely. And this bullpen's starting to shape up pretty nice. You it know, is. like you look at it, you look at it, you got Kirby Yates, Jordan Romano, Rafael Dolis, Chatwood in there. Mm-hmm. You know, like Chatwood could be a really integral part of this bullpen as well. Ryan Barucki, mm-hmm. you know, as the big lefty in there, and he's got some extra gas this year mm-hmm. like you're seeing Baraki touch 96 almost every fastball mm-hmm. and you gotta love seeing that um david phelps you know like i i, I liriano looks like he's gonna make this bullpen mm-hmm. i'm liking this bullpen yeah. you know and those those are those are seven guys that are a lock i think mm-hmm. you know the seven we just named mm-hmm. and then it depends if they go with an eight or a nine man bullpen i think they're gonna go with a nine man bullpen mm-hmm to start this season, Mm -hmm. which means a three person bench, Mm -hmm. which is why you're never going to see three catchers. It's Mm -hmm. why 
they have exactly. to start Kirk and Triple A mm-hmm. if they're not going to give him the position mm-hmm. because you can't have three you can't have three bench guys and one of, you know two of them be catchers that's insane mm-hmm. uh so the other guys that are up in the air for the those bullpen spots i mean depending on what they're doing with the starting rotation in triple a so merriweather is in there mm-hmm. uh even nate pearson we could see in the bullpen depending on how his rehab mm-hmm. goes here he's starting to pitch now again mm-hmm. so i don't think he's on a mound yet but he's throwing on flat ground Thomas Hatch, Trent Thornton, Anthony Kay, mm-hmm. even Tim Meza, who was a big part of the Jays' bullpen in 2019 when underwent Tommy John surgery. He's looking great mm-hmm. this spring. So there's a lot of question marks there. Be interesting to see how the last spot or two round up. Mm-hmm. And this is the thing, too, is I, I truly do believe if this starting rotation exceeds expectations, that we will see them go to an eight-man bullpen, mm-hmm. just have that, that fourth guy on the bench. Mm-hmm. I think that's... Uh, something that they're looking to do, mm-hmm. but I think they start the season with a nine-man bullpen. Right. Well, the nice thing with, with the short bench is we've got so much positional versatility. Really allows for that deeper bullpen. It it does really allow for that. Absolutely. So. Man, and Alec Manoa, I know Blue Jays fans are losing their mind over this kid Great right now. Great performance yesterday, mean, undeniable. Oh, I mean, as buddy, much as he I, struck out. Let's just like crap on spring training statistics. Yeah. I mean, it's still, it was exciting to watch. It, like, hard to it was exciting to watch. And dude, seven strikeouts in a row. He struck out seven Yankees mm-hmm. in a row. He has struck out eight of the nine last batters he's faced. Mm-hmm. Nine of the last 13. Like, the kid is lighting it up right now. And what's been so impressive about Manoa, dude, is not just his fastball. His secondary stuff looks great his Mm -hmm. off-speed stuff is hitting the corners he's pitching Mm -hmm. so i i don't think there's any and we it's funny because we talked about this with austin martin and jordan groshans last Mm -hmm. episode there is no need to rush these kids and i think we've got to put alec manoa into that category for sure a lot of people I've, i've seen on twitter and social media have been saying well when nate pearson comes back he can pitch three and then Manoa can come in and pitch three, and then we go to the bullpen for the rest of the game. Not how they're going to do no it. No way. I mean, yeah. it sounds cool, but it's not happening. No, it's not happening. And I think what they're going to do is, like, the truth with Manoa is that the last time he pitched was was high A. Mm-hmm. You know, he was he, he, he was at the alternate site last year, mm-hmm. which is great experience. And we've talked to several of the guys who were at the alternate site and they raved about it. Mm-hmm. Right. The guys like, like Joey Murray and, and Jordan Groshans who are just like, I truly believe that I have developed more than a regular season. Mm-hmm. And that's very possible. The same thing happened with Manoa. Mm-hmm. However, to not have that experience at triple a, it is a really dicey game to play. Mm-hmm. You know, like this is the thing is I want to see Manoa go down to triple a and I want to see him force the blue Jays hand. Mm-hmm. Like Kirk is with his bat right now. Like like Kirk is with his bat. I'd like, this is the thing that Jays fans, and it's going to frustrate them. It's going to frustrate all of us because I don't even think Manoa is going to be in the top two or three called up when there's an injury or mm-hmm. something like that. But if he lights AAA on fire, continues to pitch in April and May like he has pitched in spring training, mm-hmm. I think it is very likely that we see Alec Manoa this year. I think it's very likely we see him by June or July if there's an injury. Like you're right. But I would like to see him struggle at triple a and see how he comes out of it. Mm -hmm. I would like to see him go through a game or two where maybe he can't locate his fastball and he's got to rely on another pitch Mm -hmm. or rely on some crafty Mm -hmm. pitching to kind of get through an outing. So, Experience wise, I think that's very important for Manoa to get. I don't think there's any reason to rush him, to rush Simeon Woods Richardson. Mm-hmm. I, I, there just isn't. No, absolutely not. Richardson Woods, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Should we get into what's going on in the rest of baseball here? If we have to, might as well. Yeah, if we have to, we might as well. Uh, there are, we're going to go over. So the minor leagues are going. How do I, how do I experimental rule changes? Yes. Experimental rule changes. We're going to get into that into a second. 
So Major League Baseball is trying some rules out in the minor leagues, and we'll go through all of those in a second here. Mm-hmm. I did want to bring up Anthony Ghost okay. before we do that. So some of you Blue Jays fans out there might remember Anthony from his time in the Blue Jays system, right? Uh, the Jays traded Brett Wallace for Anthony Ghost back in 2011. Some of you might remember that Wallace was one of the prospects that they got in the Roy Halladay trade. Anthony Ghost was a top 10 prospect in the Blue Jays system for years because he had speed, like yeah. crazy speed, yeah. you know? And it's funny how often the Jays run into this where they have a guy, you know, Anthony Ghost was center fielder, great defensively, incredible speed. Looked a lot like Dalton Pompey, same sort of profile. Looked a lot like Anthony Elford, same profile, right? Mm-hmm. Just incredible defensive guys who have uh, blinding speed but mm-hmm. could never put the bat together. Mm-hmm. Anthony Ghost wound up in 2016 going from center field to pitcher. He started to become a pitcher because he had an incredible arm. Right. Looks like he is going to get a spot in this Indians bullpen. Mm-hmm. He's 31 years old. What a comeback. It's a cool it's, story. It's such a cool story. And this kid throws, I, I, you can't even say kid. <laughs> this man yeah. throws 100 miles an hour. He's finally started to locate his pitches. Mm-hmm. And the Indians are very excited about this. They figure he has back end of the rotation or uh, back end of the bullpen written all over him. Mm -hmm. I wish nothing but the best for this guy. Like, it is so cool to see somebody that was pretty much throwing on the scrap heap, someone who was, like, written off by almost everyone. Mm -hmm. So uh, Um, if it happens, and it looks like it's going to, pretty cool. Very cool story. It'd be interesting to follow him all season long. Absolutely. All right, my friend, let's get into these rule changes. Okay, so rule changes at all levels of the minor leagues. Um, basically, they're trying out one wrinkle at all different levels, right? At all different levels. So that's high A, low A, double AAA, A, AAA, yeah. double A. Yeah. So let's start with triple A. Okay. Um, basically, the rule change is bigger bases. So they're going from 15 inches by 15 inches to 18 inches by 18 inches. Which is interesting because this does mean that the bases are going to be six inches closer together. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to encourage more stolen bases. And as the as we go through these rule changes, you're going to see that that's an aspect that they're trying to encourage throughout all of these changes. It's a common thread for sure. There's a few things about the way these rules are being presented that I didn't like. Okay. Number one, this press release that they put out Basically, Manfred spun it like, we're listening to the fans. These are just things the fans want. Like, I, I want to meet the fan that was like, I want bigger bases. <laughs> do, you, like, do you remember a few years ago, I guess probably like a decade or so ago now, in the NHL when they were experimenting with weird hockey nets? Yes. They were like, let's do big hockey nets. Let's do hockey nets with like curved posts. Yeah. All this stuff. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And I think it's going to wind up the same way. I think they're just going to go back to the way it was on this particular rule. And I don't know. It's going to be the thing with making the bases bigger is whenever baseball makes a rule change, they never see what the consequences of that are going to be, right? Like all of a sudden the Tampa Bay Rays will fucking come up with some way of of right. making this rule just work for them and nobody else. Right, right. They'll make and- other players wear bigger <laughs> cleats and it'll... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I don't stupid. know... So we'll see what happens here. I, I'm i curious to see what the bigger bases mean. It could definitely encourage more base stealing, especially if you think about all the replays that mm-hmm. they go, and six inches is a lot, man. Right. Well, my, my first, my initial reaction to this was, oh, the bases are going to be slightly closer together was kind of the, the caption that I had read. And then I'm like, well, six inches is like nothing, right? And like it is. I mean, we're talking about bang, bang plays. Yeah. Right. So like six inches can be the difference between an, an out and not. Um, mm-hmm. I think we've talked to like Michael Krause uh, from the Canadian national team talking about 
why we don't see stolen bases. Uh, Tyson Gillies from the national team as yeah. well kind of relayed the same idea is that it's uh, it's not worth the injury risk. Mm-hmm. Right? Guys like Mike, Mike Trout could steal 40 bases a season if they wanted to. Yeah. Right? But it's not worth a uh, sprained thumb and missing two weeks. And this is another thing that they kind of presented this bigger base idea as, is that a, a safety precaution right. gives a little bit more room for the fielder on the base and I, a little bit more of the base open. I buy that more than I buy, oh, well, it's closer and they can, yeah, you know, maybe go for it a little more. I think yeah. if they say, well, you know, less likely to get injured, maybe they tr- they just go for it more. Never mind the, yeah. well, it's closer, so maybe I'll go for it more. I'm not buying that. But the injury prevention... Yeah. I'm in on that. So hopefully, I mean, anything that is in favor of player health, I'm, I'm all on board with. So yeah, me too. Um, double a, this is probably the sex, the sexiest hate the most. rule to talk about, uh, defensive positioning restrictions. So basically they, they're coming up with ideas to try and ban the shift. So for, for starters in double a this year, um, Basically, the rule is all infielders have to have their cleats in the dirt of the infield. So there's no moving your third baseman over to right shallow right field. Yeah. Exactly. Personally, I hate this. Why? I don't hate it because I'm all for the shift. Okay. Okay. I, 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 the shift is annoying as all get out. Okay. And if, if, you're listening to this and you want to see an example, go to our Discord. I just put a, a photo up there of last year, the Houston Astros shift against Joey Gallo, big lefty with the right. Texas Rangers, right? Power bat. Right. Always, always, always hits it to right field. Mm-hmm. So if you look at this shift, they literally have nobody on the left-hand side of the field. I mean nobody. The closest they've got is their left fielder playing deep <laughs> left center field. Yeah. And it annoys me to no end that guys just haven't solved this problem by constantly laying down a bunt whenever they give it to you right. or just even a swinging, just push the ball yeah. past the pitcher. Mm-hmm. I know, listen, I'm well aware that there's more skill to bunting than I'm making it sound like it, but practice it then. Okay. Like this problem would have solved itself if guys were constantly, when they were given the other side of the field, just took it. Mm-hmm. Well, you're absolutely right. This should be, this doesn't need to be legislated. <laughs> this needs to be just addressed by the hitters. And I mean, you're right. There's more to bunting than just laying one down, right? It is harder than you would think, but I it's think, a skill. I think where it becomes hard is not just in making contact where it becomes hard is there's a real asset when you got a runner on second and you're trying to advance them to third and you've got to, you know, hit it in the right spot at the right distance. You know, if you hit it too hard, it's out and the runner doesn't advance. If you hit it too soft, the catcher gets it. You know, like there is some real finesse. Absolutely. Bunting in that situation, right? Um, even a sacrifice bunt down the first baseline, anything like that, right? But in this scenario. That's not what we're talking about. Exactly. This no. is just make contact anywhere over there and you're safe. Like, I almost want to put double. it up on the screen here. Like, it, I, I, I can't express to you how frustrating it is to look at the picture that I'm talking about and realizing that he hit into an out. Like, that's... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it, the whole side... Like, the whole... There's nobody! Yeah, it's absurd. It's really absurd. I like that they're trying it in the minor leagues. Mm-hmm. And I hope, I, I, I mean, I'm just glad that this isn't a scenario like last year where they're like, all right, we're doing runners on second base, which I, I, I don't even mind that mm-hmm. much in the extra innings, especially being that they're going to go with regular rules in the playoffs. That's fine. Whatever. Um, um, one additional thing with the uh, AA rule change there is that it's not official yet, but by midseason they are discussing that in addition to four infielders, in the dirt, uh, they may go with the extra step and say, you got to have two infielders on each side of second base. 
Which at that point, you're pretty much saying these are where your players have to play. Yeah. Like, like, what are we going to do now? Put, put X's where they stand? Yeah. Like, at what point, <laughs> like, at what point do you just, like, let them play? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know why I'm so against this one. Like, I just, I, and again, when the Tampa Bay Rays started doing this, when Joe Madden started shifting, I hated it. I was like, what the hell? Gotcha, but we're man. talking, this is, this is 13 years ago, man. I know. It's, it's crazy. Let's... 13 years ago, they started shifting guys, and no one has solved this problem by coming up with a way to put the ball in play on the side of the field where guys aren't. I, I don't know. So let me, Francisco Lindor um, had a nice little quote about the shift uh, the other day. So this is his, I don't know if it's a tweet or what, this is Source Sports Illustrated, so a Sports Illustrated interview, but uh, here's the quote. The shift has got to be cut down. Let me do me. Let me make the crazy play. Let me be like, okay, he's going to pull the ball. I can't be on that side of the base. So as the pitch goes, I run over to the other side of the base. Pow! And I make the play. We can't market the shift. We can't market strikeouts. True. He wants the highlights, right? He wants the yeah. I, and crazy it, it will range create... dive for the, you know, hard liner up the middle, whatever. And I mean, every Jays fan out there will remember Robbie Alomar just yeah. going the other way towards the shortstop, making an incredible pick, jumping in the air while spinning and making a throw to, to first base, which you never see anymore. You never see those acrobatic defensive mm-hmm. plays because guys are just, where dudes hit the ball all the time because every stat shows you where they normally hit it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I I do see that side of it. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Where do we go from here? Single A. Okay. So what are they trying there? High A uh, step off rule. So this is for pickoff attempts. Uh, Basically forcing pitchers to fully step off the rubber before attempting a pickoff. Um, commonly seen with a left-handed pitcher um, where he lifts his leg, you know, as if he's going to pitch home and then drops the foot down towards first base and makes the pickoff move. So now they're saying even a left-handed pitcher can't do that, has to step off the rubber before he makes his move to first. And it's a balk if he doesn't. Correct. Nobody knows what a balk is, but yes. Yeah. Um, Again, this is just, I believe, in an effort to encourage... Uh, base stealing, base stealing. Right? yeah that's 100 percent what so. it is i don't mind that no i don't either well, i yeah it's fine um low a this is for all of low a uh limiting pickoff attempts so in it basically they get two pickoff attempts on the third pickoff attempt it's either a balk or an out so if you want to pick him off for a third time, you better be confident you're going to get him. Right. And if you or don't, he gets, to... he gets second for free. I don't I see like I don't know how I feel about that. I know what they're doing. They're trying to speed the game up, right? Like this is a time thing. Mm-hmm. They don't wish they don't wish one of those scenarios where the pitcher throws to first five times. Exactly. But how often does that happen? How often is the guy at first base so fast? that they are that concerned where they're throwing there four or five times. Rarely. Yeah, I don't know. I think you see it more in playoff baseball where Absolutely. everybody's just kind of gripping the bat a little bit tighter. And, yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't hate it, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. No, I, like that's the thing is I'm not going to sit here and complain about it. It's, the, it's it, fine. You know what? It's the kind of rule, though, like you said, the Rays are going to find a way to manipulate it. They're going to yeah. be encouraging their guys, hey, when you get to first – just take a little bit extra lead, right? And be ready. Get those two get those, get those two, two pickoff attempts. Yeah. And then we'll we'll take the balk. You know? Like yeah. they're gonna manipulate or then they're... it as like just take a ten foot lead and be ready to dive back into first. Yeah. So, They'll start practicing it. Yeah. This is this is what gets me upset, is that the Rays will practice the fundamentals of how they play their game until every single guy knows it inside and out and can do it blindfolded. Yeah. And yet you can't teach a guy to friggin' hit a ball where the guys aren't like anyways I know. I know. <laughs> all right so going down to the low a uh, west league uh 20 hey. second pitch clock so this is where the pitch clock comes into effect okay and then uh what are they trying 
robot umps right is the other one robot umps in the low a southeast league yeah so an automatic right. basically detector for balls and strikes so they're still going to have the guy they're still going to have the umpire behind the plate yes you know for close calls at home plate stuff like that but it's just going to be a robot that um, is going to no 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 the human umpire behind the plate will call outs at home plate. yeah that's what i mean okay yeah. sorry that's what i mean yeah he won't make any decisions on strikes or balls though no he'll have an earpiece where the robot will say that was a ball and then he will puppet yeah. it and that's it yeah i hate that me too i hate everything but... about that yeah me too it it just it doesn't feel like baseball but they're giving it a try. They figure it'll speed. The, it's it, again. This is all about speeding the game up. That's what they're trying to do. They're tr and they're trying to eliminate uh, the freakouts of the umpire and the manager getting in each other's face and all that. Oh sort yeah, of thing, all the which, entertaining part of the game. All the, the yeah. Let's like, let's eliminate it, the, the most fun part of the games. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. No fans ever bored when a manager gets tossed out of a game. I don't know. Honestly, dude, I tried. Like, I read all these rules, and I'm like, I got to be open-minded about this. I don't want to be the old man who's constantly like, baseball shouldn't change. Yeah. But on almost all of these rules, that's how I feel. You hate, you hate all of them? <laughs> like, I, I, I don't hate all of them. Uh, you know, I'm indifferent about half of them. About yeah. The one I really don't like is the shift. And I, I just, it really is more about legislating the rules than it is... Yeah. that I love the shift. I, I really don't like the shift, but yeah. it just seems like this should have been a problem that baseball solved without needing to put rules in place, but they didn't. You know, so, I mean, it's, here we are. it is absurd. It's like I've played in a couple of slow pitch tournaments where they have a home run rule where, mm -hmm. you know, each team can only have X amount of home runs and the rest have to be balls in play. You know, like you get two home runs and then, yeah the third home run is an out basically right yeah and it's just right. the idea is for to prevent those teams that are stacked with like actual yeah. athletes yeah you know give the beer leaguers a chance kind of thing <laughs> but we don't need to see that in the mlb we don't no. need to say well no you we guys don't, already yeah. have two home runs this inning so if you put it over the yeah. park again that's an out like yeah I don't know. for sure all right my man before we throw to nick algeyer we got to talk Trevor Bauer. I do this almost every episode. I can't help myself. So Tre Trevor Bauer is doing Trevor Bauer things again. Yeah. Uh, during the Dodgers spring training game against the Mariners the other day, Trevor Bauer pitched with one eye closed again. Now he did this against the Red Sox last week. We talked about it on last week's episode about him doing that and the pirate memes and <laughs> how much hate he was getting. Right. But this time he did it against the Mariners and he hit the batter. Now, this is the thing, okay? Like, everyone's all upset about this. He hit him with a split change. <laughs> like, the, the the ball looped into his bat. The batter, like, the batter just stood there yeah. and, like, watched it hit him. Yeah. <laughs> Trevor Bauer would never do that when the game is on the line. Trevor Bauer would never do it in a, in a situation where it mattered. Mm -hmm. But he... He can't help himself, man. It, it's so arrogant and over the top. He is leaning into this bad guy role so much. He might as well be playing Razor Ramon from wrestling oh, back in the day. What a great reference. All right, he's the bad guy. Like, he's just one bad decision away from starting flicking toothpicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I don't even understand why people are getting so worked up about this. Like at this point, honestly, Trevor Bauer is the Howard Stern of baseball, right? Yeah. We're like, yeah, he's got a big fan base, but you know, who's pushing this man to the front of entertainment to the, to the front of baseball entertainment. It's the haters. Yeah. It's the people who are constantly mm -hmm. retweeting everything he does that are constantly seeing stuff like him pitching with one eye and making a huge deal about a, how dare he, what, what could he do? You know, here's the thing. Trevor Bauer is a shit disturber. Yeah. He has been all along. Mm -hmm. This is the role he has chosen to play. And it actually got him a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You think he would have got $45 million for next year mm -hmm. if he was just, just a nice if he, young winner. Yeah. I mean, we've got no. a lot of money, but not that much. He wouldn't have got that much. I truly do believe that he upped his value. And, and there may be people out there that disagree with that, and that's fine. But, I mean, I, I get a kick out of it because 
I love shit disturbing. Mm -hmm. I think it's hilarious. Like a Joe Kelly, right? Like a Joe Kelly, like he literally, like Bowers just, he's hitting a button. He's like, oh, this annoys you? (laughs) This annoys you? I'll just keep doing it then if this annoys you. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. Like this is Trevor Bauer. He's Cartman. (laughs) (laughs) Nice South Park reference. I don't know. I just get such a kick out of all the haters for him. It's just like, my God, he's he's a caricature at this point. He like <laughs> that uh, that Razor Ramon reference though. Um, mm-hmm. I watched a documentary on Amazon Prime recently, uh, the resurrection of Jake the Snake. I don't yes. know if you remember Jake the Snake from Yes, I do. WWF back in the day. Um, Basically, it's about his fall from grace and struggles with drug and alcohol addiction and and uh, basically coming back up and redemption. It's a redemption tale, right? Yeah. Have you seen the movie? I haven't. Okay. It's uh, 10 out of 10 I've recommend. Seen... It, even if you're not okay. a big wrestling fan, it's a yeah. great just human interest story. Um, but he ends up going to Diamond Dallas Page to live with him. And uh, Diamond Dallas Page has this DDP yoga. It's like, you know, for old, broken down men to yeah, whatever, right? Anyways, about halfway through the movie, um, they, they basically reach out to Scott Hall, Razor Ramon, and are like, hey, come join us at this, like, makeshift rehab center that Diamond Dallas Page has set up. Right. And they go to pick him up in the airport, and he's in a wheelchair, and he's so gray and overweight it was just like shocking to see Razor Ramon as like an old broken man. And yeah. Just just an eye opener to like what these guys have put their bodies through. Yeah. And especially the old days of wrestling, like the the road schedule and just putting on show after show, night after night. And the drugs, the steroids, yeah. Just a brutal show, and like it is not a puff piece. It is not a fluffy, feel yeah. good kind of documentary. Like it's dark. Yeah. And yeah, but man, it's good. So. Anyways, that's enough of a tangent for me. <laughs> Should we throw it well, there you throw go. to Nick? Yeah, let's do it. Nick Algeyer out of Missouri, Toronto Blue Jays left-handed pitcher. We're not sure exactly where he's going to wind up, probably double A, but uh, he had some really great stuff to say. Just a fun dude to talk to. Enjoy, everybody. Thanks for listening. Hey, you know what? I got one last thing. Lay it on us. This is a little bonus point. Uh, for all you guys that are super horny about the significance of spring training stats boba shit is hitting like 120 right now so i guess if stats matter in spring training then we got to send them down to triple a to start the season right there you go all right that's all my right. old man gripe of the day all right nick all <laughs>